Hi, good afternoon and welcome. Long time no see. I've been away for a bit, haven't I? Um, literally, I've just been snowed down with work. So it's, I've just been a little bit inundated and when I've come home in the evening, I've just been too tired to even think about filming. But I've got a day off today, so I thought, yeah, let me do something different. So what I'd like to do, because I have been buying a few little bits and pieces here and there, I thought I would just try out some of the new products that I purchased. So let me show you what I purchased. Um, so first of all, I bought this from The Ordinary. I don't know if you can see that properly. So it's um, a salicylic face mask. Now, I'm not really quite sure about what salicylic does salicylic acid but apparently it's good for people with um with oily skin so i have bought a couple of these masks to try out and my intention is is probably maybe next month maybe in october i'm just going to do a month of just using the ordinary products a so skincare makeup whatever they've got i'm just going to be using nothing but the ordinary for my skincare just to see what difference it, it does and how it performs on my skin so that's the first thing I'm going to put on today. Okay. Um, next, I bought a couple of things from Milk Cosmetics. There's been a whole lot of like positive reviews on YouTube, particularly from American YouTubers, about a primer from Milk Cosmetics, and it's called the Hydro Grip um, Hydro Grip Primer. So I'm a little bit worried about it because it does say Hydro, and I'm very much an oily skinned person. But I thought I'd give it a try today. So I bought a small sample of this, and um, just to see how I get on with it. it. It's weird because I could have swore that I bought a large bottle of this already, and I can't find it. So I had a really good hunt around, sort of in my bedroom, looked around in my study where I keep some products as well, couldn't find it. So I thought, you know what? Just in case it turns up, I'll just buy the small bottle of this again so I've got this so I'm going to be trying that out today see how I get on with that on my oily skin also from Milk Cosmetics they've got a setting spray I'm very much a one brand only when it comes to setting sprays and that tends to be the Urban Decay All Nighter or the Scandinavia Skin Finish setting spray I mean to me they're both the same products anyway all made by the same brand so I, those two I know work perfectly for me but I do occasionally dabble in other setting sprays to see how they work for me so I thought I'd try this one from Milk Cosmetics as well there was a deal going on so I bought this one and it's called the Blur Spray Can you see that so I'm going to try that out later on today as well um, the foundation I'm going to try out is one that's been out for a good couple of months now two to three months and it's from uh, Umo, Uma Beauty black owned makeup company uh, the lady who owned it she did a massive uh, launch in I think it was in Selfridges in London um, oh, it was about two three months ago now I think I'm, I'm thinking it was about May or June it was around that time loads of big influencers did go along and have tried the makeup there's been some really positive praise about the product problem is that the, the praise tends to come from big influencers big youtubers who get pr and i never know if i, I never know how to take their their reviews basically because when they get when they get given products i always feel like they want to stay on the good side so they don't really tell the truth and what they tend to do as well they just tend to do uh, put it on apply they don't really do a wear test or anything like that so I'll be interested to, to, to try this out. It took me, I mean, I was actually going to buy this when it launched, but I just couldn't find the shade. The finding the shade for this foundation was just so difficult. Um, I looked at people, particularly people who weren't big influencers to see what reviews they did um, and how they found their shade. A lot of people had to buy the product online because their stores, local stores weren't selling it. And it seems like nearly everybody who purchased it online ended up getting the wrong shade because it's just really difficult to get the right prime the right shade for yourself online. So I ended up going for this one. This is in the brown sugar range. Is that right? In the brown sugar rays. Um, <coughs> I did put a comment on on Instagram about this and sort of said what shade I was going to go for and it seems like going by some of the comments I've got back it's like I may have got the wrong one I should have gone up the shade so 
let me go back a bit with Yuma Beauty they've got their products in kingdoms I think it's four different kingdoms so there's like a fair kingdom light kingdom there's one for medium skin tones sort of dark skin tones and deep skin tones I got one of the deepest colors in the neutral in the dark skin tones and probably what I should have got is went in the deep skin tone and got the first neutral shade in there that's what I probably should have done but I'm going to see how I get on with this and if I've got it wrong then I've got it wrong it's just another waste of money because again problem we have in the UK when we buy products like this we can't send them back I know in the States sometimes you can buy products and you can send it back if you get the wrong shade ask we get the wrong shade that's it and it cost £29.50 so I was very reluctant to buy it because I didn't want to make such an expensive mistake and it looks like I may have but we will see All right so there's that also from Yuma Beauty, I bought one of their lipsticks. Their lipsticks seem to have got rave reviews from everybody. Everybody seems to love their lipsticks. Um, I'm looking at the shade on there. I hope that's not the shade I chose. I, I wouldn't normally pick a colour like that, so I'm hoping that's not the colour I, I actually chose, but we will find out. And two more products. Um, I got from Revolution Beauty, which is weird because I, I've kind of stopped buying products from Revolution Beauty because I really am just not satisfied with the quality of the products. Sometimes they do um, great collabs with people, like say some of the, I'm just thinking for example, um, an eyeshadow palette I got from Tammy Clark. Um, Tammy Clark, she did a collab with Revolution Beauty. I really liked that eyeshadow palette that was a really nice one um but their foundations i found really just horrible and greasy on my skin both ones the stick and the and the um the liquid one i just found them horrible 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 so got those didn't like those at all and pity because i bought quite a few of them as well because they were so cheap and i bought a few so i'm hoping that i might be able to give some of those away and uh, what else have i got from them i do like their concealer the concealer is pretty good it runs out very quickly but the concealer is good it's actually quite a good copy for the tart shape tape if you don't want to spend sort of 20 quid on a shot shape on the tart shape tape you can use um, the revolution beauty define concealer but i thought i'd try this blush it's kind of in a nice coral shade i'm kind of really into these kind of coral shades right now so i, I purchased that i can't remember how much it cost but i'll put the correct price down below and finally um i was given by a colleague at work because she knows i'm into beauty products she picked up some samples from space mk and she got this from um, the drunk elephant brand so i'm not surprised nobody else picked it up at work probably because they didn't realize who drunk elephant were but i do so it's it's just a um a, a daily moisturizer with spf 30 in it so i thought yeah i'll get that because i do wear spf if i can i prefer to wear moisturizer with spf rather than wearing a separate spf and then a moisturizer i don't want too many layers on my skin again oily skin so yeah those are the products we're going to try today and see how i get on yeah we up for that good all right let's go and do this Okay, so I've just washed and cleansed my face again because obviously I've been up and about already for several hours So my skin was looking a bit oily. So I've just washed my face cleansed it um, So the first product I'm going to put on is the ordinary salicylic acid 2% mask, which is this um, I'm trying to remember. I think I purchased it from Beauty Bay Pretty certain it's 50 millilitres and apparently it's supposed to be a mask that is good for people with oily skin so I'm gonna Right, this is when I find out it's got a seal. Yeah, it's got a seal. Let's do that. Ooh, look at the colour. Wasn't expecting that. I was just sort of expecting it just to be that sort of either white grey mask sort of style. But I've kind of realised that a lot of the masks that are good for me, sort of charcoal-y kind of masks, they are all black in colour. Okay, so that's on. So look, we'll leave that on for a bit and let's see what they say about this product. So you've got the the Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% Mask, 50 mils. Um, the Ordinary website sells this for £9.90. Um, and it says it's with 2% salicylic acid, vegetable charcoal, so that's the charcoal effect there, Amazonian clays and squalene. 
pH 3.5 to 4.5 so it is slightly always get this wrong so it's slightly alkaline I think it's slightly alkaline if it's above, I can never remember if it's above seven it's acid isn't it and is it below I can never remember I think it's slightly alkaline no it's acid yeah if it's below seven then it's more acid if it's above seven then it's more alkaline I think can't remember I used to go back to my old school chemistry here. Right, so it's alcohol free, it's oil free, it's, um, it's got water in it, it's silicone free, it's nut free, it's vegan, it's gluten free and it's cruelty free. So a salic, salicylic acid 2% mask is formulated to target lacklustre tone and textural irre irregularities. The formula infused with charcoal and clays aims to enhance the appearance of smoothness and clarify and clarify, leaving the skin feeling refreshed. The structural salicylic acid facilitates its bloody hell, lipophilicity and miscibility with the lipids located on the surface of the skin. It is, suitable, it is a suitable ingredient for targeting the removal of dead skin cells on the surface of oily and blemish prone skin with the purpose of revealing more radiant skin beneath. Salicylic acid 2% mask is a rinse off formula. Leave on for no longer than 10 minutes in order to maximize the exfoliating benefits. Okay, okay, all right. So I'm just gonna leave that on for, it's probably been two minutes already. So I'm just gonna leave it on for another eight minutes and I'll rinse it off and then go on to the next bit. All right, see you in a bit. Right, okay, so the mask is off. Can we see any difference on my face? Does it look any different? Yay, nay? How does it feel? It feels very dry. I mean, my skin feels dry. That's literally about it, really. Um, can't really see much of a difference on my face. I suppose all my pores are closed. So, yeah. Again, it's probably going to be one of those products that it needs prolonged use to really tell if it's going to do any good. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to sort of tone my face and um, then I'll start with the next stage. So I've just been using this as a toner recently, just using it up. It's one of those things I've got in. I think I've got it in an ASOS beauty box. Let's quickly put this on. So this is a product I forgot to mention actually. This is a, a new product I did purchase and I bought it from Beauty Bay. And it's actually from Revolution Beauty who are, who've gone into the skincare things. And this is a product they, they're they saying that will make all sorts of differences to people's skin. Can't remember exactly what this does. I'm, I'm not sure if it's vitamin C or something. I really don't know. But I have started using it and I've been using it for the last, what's a couple of weeks now. And usually I put it on after my toner. Then I put my what, the moisturiser I'm, I'm using and then my makeup and then that's it. So I'm going to put that on now. So it comes in a pump like that. I'll see if I can find some information about it, but that's what it looks like. It's a sort of slight, it's a light purple product, thin lotion. And you're supposed to put it on as part of your skincare regime. But I literally cannot remember what it's supposed to do. They were doing it as a special deal to, to launch it, and it's supposed to be like, like a fantastic alternative to other more expensive products. But let me get some information on it. Okay, so what this is, I'm looking at a website called Bybi, B Y B I dot com. I'm sure I've received a, a skincare or makeup product from them before. Um, so what they basically say this is is this Bakuchio oil booster, right? So it's um, it's the Revolution Skincare One Percent Bakuchio serum contains the latest game-changing skincare ingredient. Uh, Bacuchiol that has been hailed as a natural alternative to retinol that's why I purchased it I remember now because the product I really loved using and I've got in one of my beauty boxes is from Dream Skin and it was a retinol cream um, lotion or serum that I was using at night time at night time it was 30 mils really really absolutely loved the effect that product had on my skin but to replace it was like something like 30 pounds and I just didn't want to spend that kind of money so I was looking for alternatives and this is one of the products that said that it could be an alternative same sort of effect but a third cheaper that's why I bought this, I remember now. Um, so it's been saying it's held as a natural alternative to retinol. This serum works to reduce fine lines and pigmentation. Yeah, see, you can see why I wanted it. 
um, whilst improving the, the elasticity and firmness of the skin all without any irritation. Um, so I bought it from Beauty Bay and I think I paid £10 for it. Let me see how much Beauty Bay are selling it for now. Yeah, they're still selling it for £10. So, yeah, there you go. That's one of the products I did buy. And, yeah, I've been using it night and day and fine. No problems. I haven't had any issues with it at all. So, all good. Right. Next product is this. So, this is the sample I got from a colleague at work. This is from Drunk Elephant and it's an Ombra Sheer Physical Daily Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Sunscreen. So, I'm going to put a little bit of this on because I do like wearing something with SPF in it. Okay. I don't know if it's going to give me that weird colour, that sort of ashy kind of blue tint, but we'll soon find out. Yeah, it's going to... So yes, it has left my skin looking rather purple and a bit odd, but there you go. Right, next thing I've got in my lovely little range of products is this from Milk Cosmetics. And if you watch beauty videos on YouTube, then you will have definitely have seen people talk about this primer from Milk. So it's a Hydro Grip primer. It's just honestly people just rave about it so I'm going to apply it with a brush all right this will do it's more for foundation brush but it will do I am a bit nervous about using this because as I said I am a very oily skinned person and I tend to wear only mattifying primers only but I don't intend on doing anything that's going to break me out too much in too much oil and we'll see how it works with the foundation as well to be fair though I do think I need to put on a mattifying primer in my most oiliest of areas which is this area here above my cheeks and obviously t-zone nose and down my centre of my face. So I will put on a mattifying primer there. So just wait one second. Get my old favourite out. So it's Becca Evermatte Paulus Perfecting Primer. This is my go-to everyday daily primer. Okay, primer on. The Hydro Grip leaves a slightly tacky feel in comparison to my Becca, which is a bit more smooth. Still drying down, but it's already smoother than the Hydro Grip. So I can see how the Hydro Grip works. It literally just grips the foundation and makes it stay longer, I assume. Okay, shall we go on then and do the foundation? So, oh, let me just read a little bit about the Hydro Grip one. The Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. This is the Tednor and I paid £13 for it from Cult Beauty. What they say about it, or I should say it does come in a full size. So the full size is 45 mils and that's £27. Right, okay, so what they say about it, why is it a cult product? Well, it's screaming at your face to quite literally get a grip. Let us introduce you to Milk Makeup. It's all new Hydro Grip Primer. Packaging the quintessential packaging, this green tinted liquid primer will effortlessly add deep hydration. It's boosted with aloe water, cherry blossom, hyaluronic acid and B vitamins. While forming an invisible Velcro-esque layer that grips your makeup like its, li like its life depends on it. Just give it a minute to fully absorb before makeup to activate. Tober grip mode. Woohoo! We should not milk makeup throughout the UK and Ireland. So um, I'm just looking here. It actually says with with milk makeup's brand, new green tinted liquid hydro grip primer, boasting a heavy hit of hemp derived cannabis seed extract. Didn't know that was in there. Um, as well as moisturising, smoothing, and balancing aloe water. Okay, so it's got a bit of weed in there as well. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just leaving that on for a little bit before I put the makeup on. 
Right, okay, let's get on to the main thing, which is what people are usually most interested in, and that's this foundation from Yuma Beauty. So, let's have a read of this. I'm on the Beauty Bay website, which is where I purchased this from in the end. So, um, on, Yuma, on Beauty Bay, this is selling for £29.50. They've got a buying guide for Yuma Beauty Foundations, and to be honest, they need it. They really need it. Right, so what it says here, finding the right foundation can be a battle. With so many different brands offering a variety of shades, formulas and undertones, or in many cases, no variety at all, it's not hard to get your shade completely wrong, either by accident or through lack of choice. Enter Yuma Beauty, the brand that just made foundation personal. With 51 foundation shades in their Say What? It's called Say What? Say What foundation range. The perfect shade for you is definitely in there somewhere. And with a genius solution to choosing your shade, mixing foundations to create your skin tone will soon be a thing of the past. Yeah, they say that, but I still had a whole lot of difficulty in getting my right shade. All right, so this is founded by Nigerian-born, London-based beauty editor, Sharon Tutor. Yuma Beauty under understands different skin tones, have different needs, using the Fitzpatrick scale, which measures the skin's reaction to the sun. The brand has identified six skin colour groups that share similar characteristics and needs. So this is the interesting thing about this brand. Even though they've got different shades, but not all the foundation um, shade ranges are made the same way. So I'll read on and you'll see what I'm talking about here it's actually very 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 clever these skin groups are called skin kins everyone falls into one of these categories depending on their skin color and common issues associated with said skin type but the color matching magic doesn't end there within the six skin kins there are three undertones cool neutral and warm if you have cool undertones your skin will have hues of pink red or blue if you have warm undertones your skin will appear peachy yellow or golden while neutral undertones have a mixture of these colors so that's me once you know your skin kin and undertone you can choose your foundation which Yuma has specifically formulated to target your skin tones skin concerns the shades go deeper as the numbers go up right I think my primer and moisturizer has all absorbed my skin's looking less purpley gray now looking almost a little bit oily around the edges but hey ho let's do this so i'm going to do one half of my face with a brush and the other half with a sponge methinks and let's just hope that the shade is going to be okay i'm really nervous so here we go i'm just going to use a paddle brush so i'm just going to do one pump and then let's go It looks kind of orangey on first application, but you know what? I think it's going to be all right, you know. Let's, uh... I didn't buy the concealer in the brand because I just thought I don't need it. I've got so many concealers. I think the colour's going to be okay. So that one pump looks like a medium, a light medium coverage. So I might need to do another layer. But let's do one side with a sponge and see how we get on. So I'm just going to use a, an old beauty blender here. One pump. You can see how it looks kind of orange on first application, which is a bit scary. looks almost pale on me actually so I can see why I probably could have gone up to the um, black pearl because that might have given me a bit more depth in colour the undertone is fine I haven't got a problem with the undertone but the shade I think I could have definitely gone a, a, just a shade darker it was close because this shade I've got here is what is the shade again I've got T1N I don't know if you can see that so I've got T1N and in black pearl, if I'd gone up, I would have gone for the same shade, just in the black pearl, T1N. Okay, how's it looking? I'm going to do one more pump all over and I'm just going to use my paddle brush again to do that. A 
I think one of the things that I remember um, seeing from people who have used this foundation, if they did get the right colour, they found out that the foundation oxidised pretty badly actually. So when I say oxidise, once the foundation mixes in with the oxygen in the air and oils on the skin, it, it gets darker in colour. So in a way I'm hoping that might happen. And if it does, then it might work out all right for me because I really don't want to go and buy another foundation. Foundations cost so much money. And there's been so many new launches recently and it's like, which ones do I buy? If anything, I think I need to do a declutter of my foundations, particularly the ones I'm just not wearing or I've had for a very long time and they probably passed their best. Okay. All right, so I've got it all on here. I think it's blended out really nicely. Coverage wise, I'd say it's medium to full. I probably can put a little bit more on my forehead. Right, how is that looking? Is that looking all right? What do you think? So I haven't really gone down my neck, but I think I can get away with not going down. I, th I'm, I am relying on it oxidizing a little bit to see that will make the colour match a bit more. As I said, I don't really want to go in and buy another foundation if I can avoid it. But at the same time, I don't want to not use it because it costs £29.50, so I want to use it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for a little bit, make that settle in, and then I'll do my highlight and all of that, and then I'll come in and use the other products I purchased. I wanted to show you this, um, what's happening on my face here. So under my eye, I put on my normal under eye concealer. Um, it's the Juvia's Place concealer that I've been using, the Eye Magic concealer. And then I put on my um, setting powder, which was the NYX setting powder, banana setting powder on top. As I was brushing it off, I don't know if you can see, but you can see that the foundation's been lifting off. Both sides, just lifting off. I've never had that before and I can only put that down to the foundation so I'm not sure how well this foundation plays with other products but it definitely has lifted off in these areas here not quite sure how to repair that and I'm actually scared to sort of dab more foundation on because I'm not quite sure how it will look if I do that but yeah just thought I'd point that out to you yeah not good but yeah, you can see that it's just lifted off so you can see my skin poking through there. Okay, right, so I'm just going to put mascara on. Actually, no, I'm not going to put mascara on. I'm going to do my blush and then the setting spray. And then I'll put the mascara on at the end. Let me bring you out a little bit. So the blush I'm going to try on is this. This is the one I got from Revolution Beauty. I'll just show that to you. So that's the colour. I just thought the colour was really pretty. So that's the colour there. Looks really nice, doesn't it? It looks so pretty, but it's so large. I doubt I'll ever going to be using using all of this up. But let's see what it's like. Just have that on. Yeah, it's giving a just a gentle colour. Oh, I like that. That's a nice colour. Yeah, it's nice because you can build it up. So that's good. I prefer blushes that I can build up rather than you put it on and it's like pow in your face straight away. How does that look? Yeah, I like that. That looks nice. Right, so this blush is from Revolution Beauty and the shade is Baked Peach. So it's actually called Blusher Reloaded Baked Peach. And that's how the colour looks for me. And I quite like that. It's just a nice gentle colour. Warms up my cheeks. Not too much. No, I don't want anything that's going to stand out too much. But I'm, I'm pretty certain that you could build it up to more of an effect. I mean, just for today's sake, I will build it up a bit more. So you can see that you can build it up. But I wouldn't normally wear that much blush. It's a little bit too strong for me what I've got on there but there you go so there's that I'm just going to put a little bit of highlighter on right so I'm going to try out this milk makeup blurring primer 
let's see what they say about it so this milk makeup blur spray 70 millilitres 23 pounds 75 from cult beauty pretty certain i didn't pay that so i'm not quite sure how much i paid but i know i wouldn't have paid 23 pounds for a setting spray because i'm too tight for that so i would have probably got this on a deal so it says here give your makeup some serious stain power with milk makeup's blur spray a lighter alternative to a powder this wonder product locks makeup in place and prolongs its life throughout the day part of milk makeup's blur range the spray uses blurry microspheres technology to reduce the appearance of pores fine lines and imperfections the result a smooth finish that rivals insta filter levels of flawlessness okay there we go okay so makeup's been on for a bit now foundation is kind of set this is the color that the foundation is it hasn't really got that much darker i wouldn't say so so the color is slightly off i could probably get away with it but it is slightly off it's a little bit too light for my complexion but you know it's just how it is i mean i'd wear it again because it looks right i like the way how it looks at the moment but i don't know how it's going to wear so let's do the spray first it's got an, a slight scent it's almost um a citrusy scent slightly fresh it's not too wet it's a good mist it came out nicely um yeah so i haven't left my face feeling completely wet either so that's all right that's good um, we'll leave that to dry and then the final one in the lipstick is the Yuma Beauty lipstick I've got this in the shade I can't read it now gold typical isn't it um, I've got it in the shade Miriam oh good right and that's what it looks like they look fantastic don't they look at that doesn't that look great let's see how it applies it's just got such a beautiful it's almost like a velvety soft texture a little bit of glisten on there it just looks so good you just want some berry and white music playing in the background there that is an attractive looking lipstick Jacqueline Hill this is how you make your lipsticks look when you launch not with hair and spools and all kinds of weird things like that let's um put this on shall we okay and it's not drying either because i haven't put a balm on either it's soft it's creamy the shade i thought it would be but i don't mind the shade at all it's actually nice hmm i kind of like the shade actually it's not a shade I would have automatically have purchased if I knew it was going to look like this, but I like it. It looks nice. Mmm. Oh, I like this colour. So this is the shade Miriam. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, I might have to go in and purchase a few more of these, actually. I really like the feel of it. Nice nice color so nice solid opaque color mm, yeah i do like that let me um right so that's how the color looks on the screen so that's on white skin you can see how it looks on me let's show it on someone with deeper skin tone that's as deep as they've gone with the skin coloring which is the deeper skin tone they're showing it looks more pink I would say and I'd say the color I've got on actually looks more how, how it looks on that white skin girl so I actually think it's a really nice color I like this color so this is Miriam um, the lipsticks called the lipsticks are called badass icon it's a badass yeah icon matte lipsticks and they're 21 pound 50 from Beauty Bay obviously you can buy it from Selfridges as well there are quite a few sh um, shades they they describe this color as a brown pink matte which i think is correct yeah definitely correct um and they say it's a lightweight matte lipstick make a lip statement with the lightweight and highly pigmented beauty badass icon matte lipstick their sensitivity 
The essentially silky formula glides over lips, leaving a stunning colour with just one stroke. Yeah, I'd agree with all of that. Infused with wild mango butter to drench lips with moisture for matte lips without the drying effect. Yeah, definitely would say that. It's interesting to say mango butter because, again, Jocelyn Hill, she had mango butter in her lipsticks and look how they all turned out. Um, cruelty free, paraben free, beauty editor approved. Read the article here. Okay, cool. And it's £21.50. So it's a bit of a pricey one, but it's nice and it feels really nice as well because I actually want to get away from the whole liquid lipstick thing. I think that phenomenon's kind of gone. I mean, there are still some really nice products out there, but I want to go back to the old fashioned bullet lipsticks. And I really like this one. So I'm tempted to treat myself to a couple more of those later in the year, possibly. Probably nearer my birthday, I might treat myself to a couple more. But yeah, that is a nice lipstick. So that's my overall look, guys. So products I tried out today. So I tried out the Ordinary Salicylic Acid Mask, which was nice, it felt good. Got a feeling that I probably need to use this over a period of time <clears throat> to see the overall effect of this along with some of the other products in the ordinary range so there's that I also use this uh, retinol serum I've been using this for a few for a couple of weeks already actually and I like it it's part of my skincare routine which I use at night time and in the mor morning and I tend to use it um, after I've cleansed and then I'll put this on, then I'll put another serum on probably and then I'll put my moisturiser on and then I'll put my primer on. So there's usually about four layers of products I put on my face before I step out the door. I know, it sounds ridiculous doesn't it? But hey, anti-ageing is a thing now isn't it? So you know, I'm 50, I haven't got any lines yet, I wanted to see if I can maintain that for as long as I can. So this is good and what I've actually found, it seems to be, it hasn't, my hyperpigmentation hasn't come back from after that I've cleared up because I bought this as a substitute for another product from Disciple the dream skin product and it hasn't come back so obviously this is doing the job so yeah all good with that the Hydra Grip Primer um, it seems okay again I haven't gone out anywhere yet so I don't know if my skin's going to get oily or not but we, I'll, if it if my skin changes I will definitely come back and let you know but that's how it's used that's how it is at the moment it feels nice it does feel like a nice primer it does feel very hydrating when you apply it so all good kind of pricey but it's all good that's why i only bought the small size of this the setting spray um again it feels nice it's very light mist it's not wet and soggy it came out nicely so again i will see how this works over time see if the makeup all i need to try it with a few other products as well just to see how it works because that's the only way i can really tell if it really works by trying it out with some of my, my traditional makeup that i normally put on my face so but so far so good can't really comment on it yet and this blush i really really liked i mean it's only three pound um I really like it. I like the colour. I like the way how it builds up nicely. So you can go in quite heavy or you can build it up. But I like how this colour looks on my skin. So the colour I've got on was the Revolution Beauty Blusher Reloaded and it's in Baked Peach. Yeah, I like how that looks. It's just a nice colour. So yeah, overall, I like the products that I've purchased. So I don't think any of those products are going to be sitting by the side gathering dust. I think I will use them all. Um, the one I really need to test out is this, so I'll see how I get on with this. If this if this proves to be a bit negative, so I'm going to be wearing it for a few hours now. If it does prove to be a little bit sort of crap, I will come back and let you know. But so far, so good. Did do wish I did go up that shade, but you know, I. Hi, I'm back. I've been wearing the products now for about six hours. It's coming up to seven o'clock. I think I finished applying the foundation about one o'clock. It was coming up to about one o'clock around that time. And uh, yeah, you can see how my face looks. Mmm. Okay. And finally, the foundation. Um, yes, I, I've got the wrong shade. I've chose the one T1N. I should have got the T1N in the black pearl. Okay, it seems to be performing okay. 
my skin is very oily so I mean what I will do now I will blot it and then I'll just give my final thoughts on it so but you know six hours in very oily I started to feel the oil coming through I'd say sort of within two two to three hours so it was very quick I do like foundations to control my oil for at least four hours um, if you can't do four hours then it's probably not a best foundation for someone who's got very oily skin which I do wow this is oily I don't know if it's oily and sweat but you can see lots of foundation lots of oil there so that's one. Oh, that was soaking wet two three Right, there you go, four very sudden sheets of oil and foundation. So we can definitely say the foundation, it transfers, um, it doesn't control oils that well if you've got oily skin. So do think about that if you're going to choose this foundation. Um, the shade range seems to be perfectly fine, so I haven't got any issues about the shade range. And I like the way how they split the foundation up into these different skin into different uh, skin types and shade range and it can see all the undertones as well. It's a very interesting way of making a foundation and um, and providing for as many people as possible. The only difficulty is, is that it's difficult to pick the right shade if you can't swatch the foundation. And like for myself, someone like me who lives in the south coast, I haven't really got the time or, or the means really to go up to London to Oxford Street and to swatch the foundation yes you can buy the foundation from Beauty Bay online but I'm pretty certain Beauty Bay won't allow you to return the foundation once you've opened it so it's a bit difficult and at £29.50 you've got to get it right first time so it's really a case of what you want to do and, it, and, that's, and that's the main reason why I delayed in buying this foundation because I wasn't sure what shade to buy. I didn't know if I wanted to get a T1N or a, two, two, a T2N. I didn't know if I wanted to buy brown sugar or, or black pearl. There's too many things and I couldn't do a swatch. The swatches weren't available for me. So, you know, and you can see that's a difficulty. A lot of people online who have reviewed that foundation had the same problem. Those are the, the, the people who didn't receive it in PR and spent, the, spent their own money and purchased it online every single one of them chose the wrong shade for themselves so that is something to think about and consider when you um, decide to go for this foundation if you can find a selfie just to go to if you're in the uk and swatch the foundation and don't just swatch it indoors go outside and check the color give it a good probably about an hour to settle on your skin to see what it's like on your skin before making your choice because it does oxidize so this has oxidized but it's not oxidized dark enough for me because as you can see the shade isn't there the undertone is perfect but the shade wasn't right so I should have gone I should have gone up a shade and I should have gone into the black pearl so as far as this foundation goes if I was going to use my top system in ranking it I would say for transfer, it does transfer once the oil goes through. For oil control, it doesn't really control the oils very well. For performance, it applies very easily. But saying that though, um, if you remember correctly, if you remember from earlier, it did lift. It didn't seem to work very well with my concealer and powder underneath in this area here. But it hasn't melted it hasn't separated hasn't split it seems to still be all over my face no problems there it's just in this area here where it just didn't seem to work with the concealer a um, little bit of fading in some areas but not much the price was 29.50 it's, it's, it's up there in the price range it's, it's one of those high-end products i think there are foundations that will give you a good shade range that perform better than this so I'm thinking of things like the NYX can't stop won't stop you know you're paying 15 pounds for that um, what else is there you know, you've got a Fenty Beauty it's three pound cheaper um, and I'd say it performs better than this one on my skin type it just depends on, on what you want this has got the skin benefits though so it's like it's got the skin a skin beauty skin care side of things to it as well whereas the others are just straight foundation so 
it really depends on what you want really from a foundation i think it's a little bit pricey um I think if you've got dry skin, normal skin, possibly combination skin, you may like this, especially if you like the, the skin benefits it comes with it. And if you can get your right shade, it, it, you know, yeah, go for it, give it a go. But to £9.50, it's not something I will deliberately go out and purchase. I'm going to try and use this up as much as I can because I really hate the idea of wasting £29.50 on a foundation. And I feel like I have wasted it because I can see me not reaching for this often. Um, I may reach for it more come the winter because my skin gets a little bit paler in the winter so I may reach for it more in the winter it might suit me better then rather than this warm weather so we'll see you might see me use this more in the winter um, yeah and shade range I'll be know it's got 40 what was it 40 plus shades it's a good shade range so there's no problems there so, so yeah that's my thoughts about the foundation so yeah there you go I know this video was very much chopping and it was all over the place a little bit I haven't filmed for a while so that's probably why um, and I've covered a lot of things in this video but let me know what you think about the products I tried below. Particularly let me know what you think about this foundation. If you've tried the foundation, tell me what you think. Um, yeah, God. I just wish I didn't have to, I, wish, I just wish I didn't have to spend the money on it. I just wish there was like a sample I could have got of this or somehow. Oh, particularly, no, no, particularly for foundations that cost a lot of money. I just wish there was a way of buying a small sample of it so you could try it out first, you know, that would be so good. Because £30 is £30, you know, and you can't get it back. Stop binging, Sandra. Right, that's my video. All right, tell me what you think down below. Before I go, please don't forget that I have got a giveaway going at the moment. It's on until the end of August, so 31st of August. And if you want to enter, there's two giveaways, basically. There's one being done on Instagram. There's one being done on YouTube. If you want to do the Instagram one, you need to go onto my Instagram, which is Sussex Sandra nice and easy Sussex Sandra I did a post about my three year celebration on on YouTube and in that post I've given the details about the giveaway okay so you will obviously have to follow me so I know um, and I've got your Instagram handle and then do follow the instructions of what you need to do to enter that giveaway for the YouTube competition um, again you need to subscribe to my channel I did a community post again about my three year anniversary on YouTube so you need to go onto my community post where I talk about my three year anniversary and the instructions on how to enter on there and of course you do need to subscribe if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give me a like down below and if you haven't done so already what are you waiting for? I'm giving you all of this all of this oily, sweaty, grey hair I'm going to have to do my hair again soon aren't I? look at all that yeah, I'm giving you all of this basically join the gang engage down below let me know how you're feeling what's going on with you yeah and I will see you soon take care thanks for watching bye